sometimes, science has its idols and its legends. Like rock stars, chemical engineer Zenin Bao has the right to a few privileges this morning in New Jersey. She's welcomed like a star in the labs of a famous telephony firm. But this scientist confounds statisticians and collects records. This is the amazing one, 42 awards. I have three. <laughs> Indeed, the researcher is here to collect her 43rd award, a dazzling trajectory. 27 years ago, Zinnenbao left China without a word of English. Today in the USA, her every word is eagerly shared on social networks when she proclaims her latest scientific prophecies. Our long-term vision is uh, to, to mimic human skin in terms of uh, building a electronic sheets. Thank you. Zinnin Bao has agreed to open her doors to us. Soon, you won't see the future in the same way. Destination San Francisco, California. The land of sun and Silicon Valley. Zen and Bao needed a playground worthy of her expertise. The University of Stanford, the world's second best university after Harvard. Among its alumni are Larry Page, founder of Google, and Sally Ride, first American woman in space. And 49 Nobel Prizes, a dozen of them in chemistry. a path that Zen and Bao might soon take. For three decades, the researcher has had one obsession, to find the new material that will soon replace those used in electronics, the plastic of the future, an industrial revolution for our telephones and televisions. We uh, design new plastic materials uh, that can be used to perform uh, some of the electrical functions, but um, uh, adding uh, stretching properties, biodegradable properties, and self-healing properties that our human skin has. We're going to open up new possibilities, new opportunities uh, to uh, make uh, electronics that in a form that didn't exist previously. As fine and transparent as human skin. It sounds crazy, but Zenin and her students are on the way to finding the right formula. Here you're looking at uh, many discussions I've had with uh, students and uh, other colleagues. Uh, these are some device structures we were discussing. So only you can understand this dashboard, no? Uh, yeah. I. I <laughs> This afternoon, in her lab on the third floor, Zenin has come to check the results. They are as expected. Uh, hi, Jie. Hi. So Jie is um, uh, working on stretchable semiconductors. Um. You're looking at the thinnest, most elastic electronic circuit in the world. There are many transistors. How many transistors I are think four here? Uh, ten. ten. Ten transistors here, and she can uh, stretch them and uh, uh, test their electrical behavior. They still they don't change. Well, transistors uh, can be found in computers, in displays, in cell phones, but they are not made with plastic materials. They are made with silicon. <laughs> With this material, your phone will be like rubber. As for batteries, Zenin's team once again has the solution. This is what it looks like today. This is what the researcher's team has done with their process. Here's this polymer once we've assembled it into a battery. Again, is flexible and stretchable if you pull on it. Yeah, because if we make electronics that are skin-like, uh, then we need uh, also battery to provide power for our electronics, for the sensors and circuits. The latest innovation, like human skin, this new kind of plastic can heal on its own. 
the, the material return to its uh, original mechanical property and the chemical property. But imagine we can have a transparent uh, plastic that uh, when there are scratches, uh, it can heal itself. Uh, then we won't have uh, cracks like this. An impressive innovation. All these materials are biodegradable. They can be thrown away, yet won't pollute the environment. Together, these applications will soon shake the world of industry. Major Korean and American firms weren't wrong. They are backing Sinan's work to the tune of several million dollars annually. A rarity in the world of science. The chemist can count on around 50 researchers among the best in their field. They know they have everything to gain by helping Zenin Bao. Because the scientist is also an outstanding entrepreneur. To find out more, a quick detour to the San Francisco suburbs. Home to one of the most dynamic startups of the moment. It has already attracted $35 million from investors over five years. Hey, hey, good. AJ Verkar, 33, has long been a Zenin disciple. They founded the company together. Their secret was these flat screens. Transparent, flexible, yet chock full of electronics. One thing that really separates us from the conventional or incumbent material is the ability to be very, very flexible. They're all looking to try to make their final either tablets or smartphones um, flexible. Multiple different companies looking at things like incorporating these into organic solar cells, for example, which is an area that Janan's research group does a lot of work in. And also looking at things like smart windows. We even have some opportunities with, for example, car companies. And when you said the name of Zenan, you have a lot of investors? A lot more, a lot more, certainly a lot more credibility. Yeah, definitely. I know what I want to do with my life, and uh, uh, I, I'm excited with the work uh, I'm doing and also where things are going. The scientist's incredible journey is impressive. Sometimes one's destiny can hinge on little things. Childhood memories, like a summer stroll with her parents, also researchers, and whom Zenin still hasn't forgotten. My father asked me, uh, if we throw your popsicle into the lake, uh, do you think it will float or it will sink? So I, I said, it's going to sink. And my father said, are you sure? Do you want to do the experiments? Sure enough, the popsicle float on top. That's how I learned uh, uh, ice has lower density compared to water. Zenin's parents soon saw her potential. But in 1980s communist China, the future looked bleak. To offer her new opportunities, in 1990, the couple decided to leave Asia and their memories behind for the American dream. They moved to Chicago. Years of sacrifice followed. She uh, went to two jobs and need to need prepare the test. So it's very hard time for her. Every week, uh, well, maybe uh, 40 hours. It's still regular hours, but uh, mm -hmm. then after work, I'll be studying. If I do that, if I do well, then I'll be able to get into a good university. Oh, I haven't thought she would did so much achievement. Yeah. In, in Chicago, when she studied, she, she asked me why your Chinese Parents always give kids pressure. We, both of us, haven't given you any pressure. We haven't given you pressure. This pressure is from you by yourself. So she always give her pressure herself. So, <laughs> sorry, so sorry. she always progress, step and step, yeah. So we are very proud of her. And the researcher has no plans to retire. What matters to her are the medical applications of her work. For a glimpse, we return to the lab at Stanford. Zenin is meeting Clementine Boutry, 
one of the two French members of the team. Hi, Clementine. Hey, hi, hi. What are you working on? Uh, these are the sensors that we will use on Tuesday for the in vivo measurements into the rats, you know, rejection. Because now she can miniaturize thousands of sensors and imitate human skin, Zenin has a dream. To restore the sense of touch to people with paralysis, allowing prosthetics to sense and to feel. In recent months, this announcement has grabbed headlines and caused a sensation in the U.S. media. That sense is something people with artificial limbs obviously don't have. Researchers at Stanford are working to change that. Here we made the first uh, uh, artificial mechanoreceptor, flexible ar artificial mechanoreceptor, but ultimately we would like to uh, use such devices and make an entire sheet that covers hand. The chemist estimates that it will take her another 10 to 20 years, but she has made it her life's work. That dream has always been been there, uh, even in the Star Wars. Uh, so many years ago, this was um, pictured as a science fiction, uh, and these science fiction also inspire scientists. Uh, my belief is uh, if one wants to do something, uh, this person is going to make it happen. In 2016, the renowned scientific magazine Nature named Zenon one of the 10 people who matter to the planet's future. At 46, who knows what new inventions the chemist has in store for us?